In this video, I will talk about how to examine the open educational resources you find with an eye to discerning whether or not they are appropriate for your course. In other words, evaluating them. This is important because even if you are searching for open educational resources in OER repositories, sometimes you'll find content that does not meet the requirements for actually being an OER. There are a lot of repositories and search engines that mix merely free content in with OERs. It's not wrong to use free content in your course. It does, after all, save your learners or the college money. However, it lacks all the other advantages. You can't embed free content in your course. You have to link to it where it is. That means if it disappears, you're out of luck. You can't keep your own copy of free content. You have to use the original copy. And that means that if they change it, you can't do anything about it. You also can't adapt or remix free content or update it to make it accessible. So when you're evaluating an open educational resource, the first thing to do is make sure that it has that Creative Commons license. The next thing to do is look at the resource itself. Make sure that it's all there and everything works. Sometimes links break, or servers get slow, or old code doesn't work in new browsers. Content that was good when it was created may now be out of date. Open educational resources are usually somebody's passion project, and they often don't have a sustainability plan built in. If the person who created it changes jobs, loses interest, or otherwise moves on, the OER may disappear or break. The advantage is that since it's an OER, if it seems worth it to you, you can give it a new home, fix it, update it, use it, and share it with the world again. So you have an OER, and it's definitely an OER, and it works. The next evaluation criteria is whether the content is right for you. Is the scope right? Is it accurate? Is it in enough depth and detail? Is the focus what you need it to be? Are the examples and illustrations a good fit? And if not, is it good source material and worth the effort for you to tweak it until it's just right for your course? Similarly, is the OER appropriate for your audience in terms of their academic level? How about their mode of study? Online, face-to-face, -face, blended, or synchronous versus asynchronous? And is it appropriate for their cultural background and other factors? If it's not, is it good enough source material and worth your effort in making it a better fit? How does the OER you've found fit with the content and learning activities you already have for the course? Does it match in terms of point of view, school of thought, and terminology? If not, can you do a quick find and replace, or a more complicated adjustment? Is it a good enough resource to be worth the time and effort of doing that? Does it do a good job of providing your learners with the information and skills they'll need to meet the learning objectives you've set for them? If not, is that something you can fix easily enough? Consider the technical difficulties and time considerations of making those adjustments. Texts are easy to fix. It's quick enough to add an arrow in a text box to an image. But more complicated changes might require a much greater investment. We're legally and ethically obligated to make our courses accessible to people with disabilities. So when we select content, including open educational resources, we have to throw back the ones that aren't accessible or can't be made accessible. If something is a really long, dense block of text, you can chunk it down. If a PDF isn't readable, our Accessibility Services Department can fix that. They also have some funding to add closed captions and verbal description tra tracks to videos. It is easy enough to add good alt tags to images and make appropriate text or table alternatives. But some things that are supposedly OERs are built on inaccessible platforms or have inaccessible features. For example, anything that's made with Adobe Flash would have to be converted to HTML5 in order to be used, and that's a huge investment of skill and time. I'll discuss this in greater detail in later videos. You should also be thinking about how the OER feels as a sensory and cognitive experience. Your learners should be able to focus on the learning objectives that you've set for them without being distracted by unpleasant sensory experiences, having to strain to see or hear, struggling to work the controls, or dealing with technical problems. If an OER is flawed in these ways, sometimes you can polish it up a bit, or even just simplify it to remove the extraneous things that were acting as distractions or causing technical difficulties. But if the quality of the original images, sound, or video is poor, there's not much you can do. This is another thing that is addressed in greater detail in later videos. There are so many factors involved in evaluating open educational resources that we've provided a rubric that might be helpful. 
You can find it by googling iRubric Evaluating OER. It is also available in the Empire State College Library's Get Up to Speed with OER tutorial. This is what the rubric looks like. We soon hope to have an updated version that is a simple table available in the OER tutorial.